1910, Mexico was in a state of revolt against their president, Porfirio Diaz. This was the beginning of the Mexican Revolution. This decade-long civil war was led by several individuals whose personal political agendas frequently determined the course of the revolution. Jose Guadalupe Posada, a Mexican political printmaker and engraver, had opposed Diaz. Posada used calaveras and bones to make political and cultural critiques. Posada's illustrations were often filled with political satire. The decision to use calaveras in his illustrations had two purposes. Graphically speaking, these images jump off the page and cannot be ignored. Secondly, the people responded to the symbolism of the calaveras as it was a deeply ingrained to their culture and subconscious. The most famous calavera is known as La Calavera Catrina. Rooted deep with the Mexican side, Catrina is considered to be the personification of Dia de Muertos. La Catrina was created in 1910 by José Guadalupe Posada. The symbolism of the calavera, which is in essence death, was the reminder that physical life was temporal, while the spirit is eternal. Additionally, Posada's intent was to show that in death, everyone is equal, despite one's economic status or position in life. Death was the same for everyone and it spared no one. Posada's illustrations have been credited with raising awareness concerning the political injustices and abuses of the day. Posada was contributing greatly to the work of the revolutionaries who saw justice from the evils of Porfirio Diaz's dictatorship. Posada played a pivotal role in the development of Diego Rivera's work. Rivera was inspired by Posada's attention to the working class concerns, as well as his expressive artistic technique. When the Mexican Revolution ended in 1920, Porfirio Diaz had been overthrown and a new government came into rule. This new political party was called Partido Nacional Revolucionario. The PNR was led by Plutarco Elias Calles. The intent of the PNR was to institutionalize the agreements brought on after the revolution. The PNR's goals was to establish a new era of prosperity and social equality for all of Mexico. One of the ways it planned to do this was through the focused political communication through art. In 1920, the new government decided to pick up the work of the famous artist Gerardo Murillo and commission a large number of public works of art, which will promote and support the values of fundamental to the revolution and to help establish a new identity for Mexico. During this time, most Mexicans were illiterate. The promoting of the new government's agenda could not be accomplished through printed works. Instead, the government communicated their political agenda through large-scale murals. Mexico has a long tradition of mural paintings that dates back to the time of the Olmecs. The earliest known major civilization to have lived in what is now Veracruz. Murals became one of the most famous forms of art in Mexican culture, a countrywide tool for means of expression. This tradition continued as murals were used to introduce the Mexican people to stories and ideas of Catholicism, a branch of Christianity that taught that the Bible was the revealed word of God and that Jesus Christ was believed to be the Son of God. These murals were commissioned to be in public places which could be seen by many. The murals were usually painted with themes glorifying the Mexican Revolution, recalling Mexico's prehistoric heritage, and promoting the ideas of the new government. In order to create these murals, the government employed some of the best Mexican artists of that time, including Diego Rivera. Diego Rivera was born on December 8, 1886 in Guanajuato, Mexico. Rivera is credited with helping establish the Mexican muralist movement. He was a Marxist who was part of the Mexican Communist Party that had ties to the Soviet Union. Rivera used his art to express his political views and to paint the life in Mexican peasantry and its culture. Diego Rivera has studied in Italy, learning the artistic style of the famous Italian Renaissance painters, such as Giotto. 
and studying Giotto, Rivera had picked up the fresco style in which the painting was done in water-based pigments on a wet line plaster so that the paint penetrated and became fixed as it dried. After his return to Mexico, Rivera's early works had shown his Italian influences as he began painting murals stressing things from everyday life and culture. Rivera was employed by the government to paint several murals to forward their agenda. One of his most famous murals was Dia de Muertos. Dia de Muertos was painted in 1923. The mural is located on the south wall of the Port of the Fiestas at the Ministry of Education in Mexico City. It measures 13 feet 8 inches by 12 feet 4 inches. According to Anna Sauter, Diego Rivera created popular political murals in Mexico that often included attacks on the ruling class, on religion, and capitalism. This can be seen in Dia de Muertos mural. In Dia de Muertos, one of the first things the viewer can see are three giant calaveras playing guitars. Starting from the left, the first calavera is a worker, the next one a revolutionist, and the last one a campesino. Behind the calaveras, painted on a canvas backdrop, are individual skulls and crossbones. They look down on piles of anonymous skulls. The skulls are wearing the identifying hats of a priest, a soldier, a banker, and a student. Diego Rivera depicts the division in society and demonstrates how religion, military, corporate, and political structure, structures influence how the working class thinks and the things they do. The dancing skeletons create a hierarchy above a Pack Street fiesta. This resembles La Merced, a market that was a few blocks away from where Diego Rivera used to live as a child. In the foreground is an Indian woman with a white long sleeve shirt, ankle length dress, and pigtails. She's preparing tacos on a grill for the crowd. Beside her, to the right, are urbanized Mexican women in short hair wearing short flapper skirts, pearls, and high heels. According to Pete Hamill, high heels are a symbol of the corrupt, falsely modern Mexico that Diego Rivera feared. High heels symbolized the social differences between the lower working class and rich upper class. Working women could not afford the luxury of wearing high heels, as this hindered the ability to move freely through the rough terrain of the fields and homes. Rivera depicted the market full of people. He lined the streets with several recognizable faces. Among them are himself, wearing a rakish sombrero and his first wife, Lupe Marin, in a stylishly abrupt hat that covers most of her face. In the crowd, there's also the actress Celia Montalban, the poet Salvador Novo, the bullfighter Juan Silvetti, and Diego Rivera's assistant, Maximo Pacheco. The repetition of skulls, hats, skeletons, faces, dolls, and jars are woven together to intricate patterns that keep the eye moving from left to right, and finally down a descending street in the background. The eye can follow the hats or it can follow the color vermilion. Nothing moves, but nothing is static. There are important elements to this mural. There are implied lines created between the viewer the three giant skeleton puppets and the individual schools painted behind them. Some of the people in the crowd are also staring back at the viewer. There are other instances of implied lines created. For example, the Indian woman cooking the tacos and the woman who is sitting on the stool with her back to the viewer. People looking at other people in the crowd and people looking towards the stage. The viewer could see movement whether it's by looking at the three giant skeletons playing guitar, the Indian woman in the foreground cooking tacos, or the woman and the man drinking out of glass cups. Rivera uses contour lines, and this could be seen on the clothing from the people in the crowd, on the wooden stage, on the tables, chair, stool, on the grill, on the huge liquid jars and on the balconies from the buildings on the background. Rivera uses texture and this could be seen on the decorations used on the stage, on the round cactus plants located at the bottom of the edge of the stage, and on the fringes of the yellow dress. 
Diego Rivera uses colors from a warm palette such as yellow, orange, brown, and tan. He also uses colors from a cool palette such as green and blue. For my artwork, I was inspired by Jose Guadalupe Posada and Diego Rivera. I used a farmer, a nurse, and an elite Katrina to depict the social imbalances that are present today. Calaveras were used to show how in death people are seen as equal despite their social status. I also use calaveras since they are culturally tied to Mexico. Calaveras are used in Mexico but are especially seen during El Día de los Muertos as a way to remind us to enjoy life and embrace mortality. Overall, Diego Rivera used murals to portray cultural identity, political propaganda, and historical tradition.